How's everyone doing? Yeah. Who's excited for this one? This is kind of like the penultimate panel right now, right? Yeah? The panel, but the ultimate panel. Okay. Yeah. So, good to see you again, Warrington. You know? It's been, it's been at least three months. It's been three months. Hello. <laughs> I've been uh, joining the Days of the Dead family. Yeah, welcome, welcome. It's, good, it's a good family to be in, right? Yeah, I'm happy to be on for a ride. Yeah. So I have a, an opening question for you guys, and, and that is, what got you involved in Friday the 13th? What was your audition like? Did you even know what you were auditioning for? Just start here and move on along. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I knew exactly, uh, you know, certainly I read the script before, uh, and um, I actually, uh, you know, uh, Frank, let's see, Simon and Cuban were the casting directors. I knew them in New York, and uh, they called me in, and I, you know, read a couple of times. I've read with um, uh, Steve Miner, and actually have, you know, kind of a very funny story. I was paired up, you know, certainly I ended up with uh, Marta Kober, who, Sandra, my, you know, Sandra and I, we were a couple, and so I was paired up with with this actress, who uh, um, uh, you know did the audition with me, and she was just bouncing off the walls. <laughs> she was so excited, and just you know on another planet. And so at one point, I looked over at her, and she's like, like you know, kind of, and I looked over at Steve, and I said, Are you kidding? <laughs> and that connection with Steve asking about this crazy actress is what got me the job. Because we made a connection and it was like we both thought that this actress was just insane. So, so that's how I got the job. And I'm the insane actress. <laughs> yeah, and she got the money part. <laughs> That she's so insane, she's going to take on the guy in the bag on her side. Um, let's see, it was, it was a casting call in New York, and um, I just remember kind of going in and reading a couple times, and, uh, and it's funny because in those days in New York, you kind of sit in rooms with the same, everyone's kind of typecast. Like Bill's there, is this handsome young dude. No. And, <laughs> Yeah. Who's she talking about? <laughs> He's going to be the couple guy who gets, you know, death while going, coming and going at the same time. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Uh, but, I, you know, I had never seen Friday the 13th Part, the first one. Actually, I saw it with Adrian for the first time like a year ago in Portland. I was wow. like, I sat and watched the movie at the Portland yeah. cinema, and I said, I kept saying to Adrian, I went, I don't think I've ever seen this movie. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this movie. I could not believe it. So uh, I, at that time, I wanted to do a whole different genre than um, horror films, but um, did, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, then I got cast, and I was like, oh, what the hell? OK, and I had a great time, and I'm really, really grateful really grateful and especially to see all you guys here i mean who knew that we'd be here a hundred years later <laughs> <laughs> well my experience was slightly different um as you know alice did make it to the end of part one but unfortunately she she uh the better half of me uh we encountered a stalker uh pretty pretty much uh two weeks after part one was released, and my world just turned upside down because there were no stalking laws, there were no cell phones, there were no video cameras. So it was basically uh, trying to convince the police and then later the FBI that there was somebody in my world that I didn't want. And they said, oh, well, that's too bad. You do a film like that, what do you expect? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's gotten much better, but there, in 87 or 86, when poor Rebecca Schaefer died uh, because her stalker actually <laughs> killed her, there, they initiated some stalking laws. But prior to that, you were basically on your own, and so uh, 
it was it was a nasty time for me, but Sean Cunningham, the director on the first film, the first film was just so fabulous, and I said to him, listen, uh, whatever you need to segue into part two, I'm there for you, but my world is kind of, and I wasn't, I was told, this is not a cool thing to share with people, back then it was just something you kind of kept to yourself, there was no social media, there was no support groups, um, right now I have a, a Grady Hendrix audiobook, my first, if anybody knows Grady Hendrix here, um, yeah, super horror writer, he was a huge fan and the demise of Alice in part two actually stuck with him so, so horrifically that he was finally during the pandemic got around to writing the Final Girl Support Group, which is now a bestseller, you'll find it at the airport, um, bestseller, and <laughs> I got to narrate 13 hours, so I'm on Audible if you want to hear it, Final Girl, to make, and it's a part of the it's been tremendous, so for me it's been very cathartic, I've, I've never been able to actually write about what happened because I've worked very hard with therapists and psychiatrists Move on, and I did. I mean, I am the happiest camper in the world right now, and it's all because of my fans, so thank you very much. You know that I'm a hole in my heart to make it worthy. The pain, it disappears when you know that you're actually able to empathize with everybody, because we are all survivors. Anybody in this audience right now has survived something? I know you have, and so uh, it puts me on a just more compassionate level with you, and so, Yes, I got there, I had no script, uh, no one told me anything about what was going on. I thought I was going to camp. I did not have a script for some reason, but then again, the two final scenes in Friday weren't in the original script. So I thought, maybe hey, this is the, the norm, uh, this is what's happening. And needless to say, I get there, and it's the last day of the shoot. Unbeknownst to me, I show up, and it's a skeleton crew, no prop master, the coffee guy was the one with the retractable ice pick <laughs> and forgot to check it. So the first time the ice pick actually went into my cheekbone and they had to actually aim for the hole in my face. So yeah, part two is not a great experience, <laughs> but it got them where they wanted. And I always said it was a post-traumatic stress stream and Alice got through part one, she's a final girl, she's not gonna go down that easy. So it, to me, if anyone's ever been in a horrific situation, you know post-traumatic stress dreams can be very vivid. And I, that's my story and I was sticking to it. And now there's a, I always say she was painting in the woods drinking fine wine. And, uh, and fortunately, uh, we have a full circle. If anyone's seen a Jason Rising fan film, anyone here? Vinny DeSanti and James Sweet, uh, the guys behind the Ever Hike Alone, made something that uh, proved my theory, so I'm very happy. And, uh, <laughs> and now Alice can go back to painting in the woods and drinking fine wine. <laughs> Crystal Lake wine, by the way. <laughs> I didn't know those things about you, so I'm glad you're sitting here. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm Russell on Play to Scott, and um, I didn't have an agent at the point that I got this project. I actually saw it, there was a, a newspaper kind of magazine called Backstage mm -hmm. that lists yeah. auditions and things. And I saw it in there, and I, like you, had seen the first one, and I was a fan of Friday the 13th. And I thought, well, that's cool, they're doing a sequel. I enjoyed the first one. So I met Steve Miner uh, and uh, auditioned for him, and I think I went back a second time, and then I got the part. And of course, all of us were shipped up to Kent, Connecticut, where it was shot. And I was uh, just uh, did like you have you a party? Did what? Did you all like because I didn't experience right. your your camaraderie? I know on part one we loved being with each other. It was a party. Oh, we did. So oh, that's yeah. funny. We did every day really was a party. Like, like, I didn't really. Oh no, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but we all got along very well, no, except except for I Amy. Like, yeah, I yeah. thought everybody I was really great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, it was a great experience for me, and, and like you had said, also very grateful for you guys, because this franchise has just gotten you know, off the scale. It's amazing, the longevity of it, and it's because of you. And uh, we love that, and we, we were very appreciative of them. Appreciate them, so thank you. Best fans in the world. Oh. Yes. Friday fans. Friday fans.
Yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys, are, you're, you're great. I mean, I never thought I would ever see this in my life when I did this movie. I, I, it was just a job. I didn't make that much money. Who ever thought 40 years later people would still be interested in this? It, it's astounding to me, really. But I, I did this, I was actually in New York on vacation. I, you know, I didn't know anything about Friday the 13th. I'd never seen the first one. And my agent said, do you want to go for an audition while you're here? I think I went for two or something, or three. I was there for like two weeks. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I said, sure, let's, uh, sure. And she said, it's for a horror movie. She didn't even say it was a Friday the 13th. And then I got there and I met Steve. And you know, it went well, I guess. And I went back to LA and Steve, lived in LA too, so Steve called me when I was in LA and he said, this is true, he hadn't even told me he got the part, and he said, do you want to go see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? <laughs> and I said, uh, why would I do that? And he said, well, have you ever seen Friday the 13th? I said, no. Have you ever seen a horror movie? I said, no. <laughs> so we went to see it and, uh, you know, we went and had a drink and he said, well, I want you to do the part. It was like that kind of thing. It wasn't even through my agent, it was like... It makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah! It makes no sense. What? makes no sense. That didn't make any sense. No, your story did. Your story did. Did you know Steve before? No, no, I... I know. You just said, let's go see a movie and... He did, he did. He said, you want to go see Texas Chainsaw? That's the part that makes no sense. Yeah. I know. I know. No. like, right? He's saying. So, where was I? So, uh... But I, I'm still like very friendly with Steve. I play golf with Steve all the time, and we're still friends. And we played tennis for many years after that because we both love tennis. And uh, I've worked in two or three other things that Steve has done. Um, you know, so you know, I had a recurring role in uh, what was that Disney? I forgot my credits. <laughs> what was the Disney? What was anybody know the Disney series with the kids that uh, spoke sign language? It was on ABC Family. Anybody know that? No. I, I, I've got, got somebody get I've got your out. resume right here. I thought somebody <laughs> could help me. <laughs> hey, uh, anyway, I did. A, Steve was a producer and director on that, and I did several episodes of that. Anyway, that's that's my story, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren right now. Hi, everybody. Thanks again for coming. This is really um, just incredible that. Um, what's going on with the franchise and that we're all here. Some of us haven't seen each other in many, 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 many years. Like this guy. <laughs> yeah, so it's really cool that we're all brought together, you know, and it's cool for you guys, but it's really awesome for us too to catch up and, you know, hang and say hi. Um, just, uh, I got the role, I was doing a lot of TV commercials at the time um, in New York City where I was born and raised, and I got a, uh, the Bronx. <laughs> South of the Bronx. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the South Bronx, 149th and Prospect. We'll be right back to you. No. <laughs> I'm a Yankee fan. Grew up in a tenement and then moved to the projects. Yep, cockroaches and everything crawling across wow. my face growing up. I kid you not. Very, uh, wow. yeah, yeah. Shoes that didn't fit, so I have my feet actually look like this because I didn't have shoes that fit. So I'm really weird looking feet. Anyway, that's the <laughs> So um, I got called in by the casting director. Um, you know, uh, Meg Simon. Yeah. yeah, because she cast me in a lot of TV commercials and they called my agent they said, you know, well, Lauren, with Lauren Marie, you know, looking to do movies and whatnot? And she said, of course, you know, what actor doesn't want to, you know, do a movie or what have you? And so she says, well, we're looking for a very specific type, just like a really nice all-American girl. And they're like, that's Lauren. So <laughs> I went in and read with um, for Steve Miner, the director, and with Meg, and uh, basically that afternoon I got the phone call and I got the part. So. There you have it. Easy breezy. It was easy, yeah. easy, easy breezy. And then it got shipped off to Connecticut, you know, with the rest of these guys. Scared me a few times and uh, freaked out because I'm from the Bronx and it's loud and it's noisy and there are lights everywhere. And here we are in the middle of the woods and it was really <laughs> creepy. And so it was really, it was, it really set the tone when we got there, just the creepiness of being at a sleepaway camp. Lord, I just want to say, to, to add on to oh, that, yeah. when we would finish work, some of us, 
Uh, we know we're in that lodge, we see a lot of it. And then we had to walk down this long road with big tall trees on both sides. Do you remember that? To, to get to cabins. Oh, and yeah. After work, I, I remember walking down that road and some of the crew would be in the bushes going, kill, kill, kill. kill. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, they would scare us. They, oh, they, would, they were horrible. But it was, it was dark and it was creepy yeah. us and it was cold. Thing, um, yeah, yeah. We, um, we shot for like eight weeks and six weeks of it was at night. We would go to work at dusk and work till dawn. Yeah. So we were completely screwed up. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't we do the daylight stuff the last two weeks? So we had already no, we been, did that first. We did that first. We did yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we did that first. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did the stuff. the first thing to do. Your body <laughs> your body's still out of rhythm because that's right, it probably was last, the dark yeah. stuff, because I, it takes you a while. You're like, want to sleep in the day, and anyway. But six weeks in the dark. Don't Next. you remember at breakfast, they had like yeah. eggs, sausage, pancakes, and whiskey? Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the end of the day. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. For your coffee, right? For your coffee. Oh, well, I don't know. And, and that's a beautiful coffee. town. <laughs> shot is a beautiful town it's very pretty i mean where we actually shot was a little like a campground but the little town was great kent's a really pretty town very quaint yeah very quaint what about you Arden? how did you get involved wow this this is uh, shocking to be here uh, thank you all for coming thank and this you is all. a reunion right thank well, you not you, but the anniversary being, right yeah so incredibly supportive to all of us to me to the brand and I guess we're really here because of the huge success of the brand after, you know, we made our mark. But, uh, wow, it, it's a shocking set of circumstances. And, yeah, I'm overwhelmed that we're still talking about it now. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, I had come from college, Villanova, came to New York, and I'm going through the acting school story, still trying to find out what the hell you're going to do with your life. So I, at that time, I guess Lee Strasberg was a good answer. Okay, I'll go to acting school, and then I'll figure it out from there. I guess then you start to make the rounds and you're reading the trades, you're reading this, reading that. If you're lucky, you might have an agent. And then, yeah, that agent gets a call for, uh, I guess, I guess they refer to it as Friday the 13th. I don't know. But then they give you a script and the script said Jason on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the original. It didn't say Friday the 13th. I had seen the first movie and I was like, oh my God. I wasn't really a super horror buff at the time, so I didn't really know and I was young. And I don't like to use the word 40. Like, I, I still have to accept it as the 40th reunion. Because I still view myself as being 40. But anyhow, <laughs> I've mastered the art of being in denial. But anyhow, um, <laughs> so yeah, you get it. I was 14 when I shot. Uh, <laughs> so you get the call of Owen and Reed for this part. And so I get submitted. Yes, I'm in the human casting. I was lucky enough to have an agent. And then I go in to Reed. For John's part, <laughs> yeah, so I'm here reading that game. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I guess, the the, uh, the handsome counselor at the camp. <laughs> yeah, so I'm reading, reading, then they call you back, and then you gotta meet the director, Steve Miners. You're lucky you get a call back. You're like, oh, man, I got a call back. Then you might meet Frank Mancuso, one of the young guys producing it. Then you meet the whole team, right? Then you get hit with the bad news by them saying, uh, Warrington, we love you, we love you, but I, you know, you just can't be that counselor. We're gonna have to go with John Fury. Who is that shithead? <laughs> I was dying. Okay, but we like you, we like you, we want you involved with the movie. Oh, well, that's great. You can, you can do anything you want with me. Then they said, well, we're, we're happy with John Fury, but you, we don't know what to do with you, so you know what? You could be Jason. And I go, well, who the hell is he? Well, you know, because at this time, he didn't exist. Like, he'd come up out of the lake, right? And then you're reading the script. Well, gee, he doesn't talk too much. <laughs> okay, and then they go, well, you mind if we shave your head? We really need to get this short, short feathered hair. You got to do this, got to do that. What? And then it, it could do, well, we got to send you to the dentist. We got to get a whole, um, uh, you know, uh, concoction of the worst dental problems known to mankind. Okay. And you're all excited. You got a part in a movie. You don't really care what the hell you're doing, right? Yeah, I'll do any goddamn thing. Shave my head. I don't care. Give me some teeth. Whatever. We're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. And then as they said, you end up at uh, Kent, Connecticut in the camp with all these fine young people. And shockingly, I haven't seen, I haven't seen some of them since 
we were at Camp Crystal Lake. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is overwhelming. But anyway, it's been an amazing journey, and uh, I guess I'm very, I consider myself lucky to be in the family of Jasons, and uh, you all have made the brand what it is today, so we're still talking about the journey of Jason, and I'm grateful for all the things that you all collect and, and feel part of the Jason Friday 13th family, what can I say? And it's great to see all this. And when Bill of Days of the Dead said, hey, I think we're going to do a 40th reunion, I was like, oh, that's a great idea, but I'm only 40. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you all. Thank you all. Okay, so do we have any audience questions? Yes, sir. Well, y'all all look like you're great partiers, and I know y'all got to have some great party <laughs> things that y'all did after shooting. I just would like to hear one or two if y'all have any stories. Well, I, you know, I mean, certainly the thing is, is, is that, you know, that Amy said here in terms of, of breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast, was, you, breakfast was the meal. And it's true. You know, they had the eggs, they had the, you know, bacon, potatoes, whatever. And then they had the booze. A full bar. A full bar. <laughs> and people would bring things, you know, like, you know, okay, I, I'm from, you know, because a lot of the crew wasn't necessarily from New York or whatever, and they would bring in, well, well, you know, in my hometown, this is the drink that everybody drinks. This is the best drink. So people started, you know, mostly the crew, because they had, they were more mobile than we were as the cast. And they would bring different, you know, this is the drink of the evening. This is, <laughs> this is what, the, you know, this is my, you know, the best thing that I've had, you know, so try this. So that's what it became. I mean, breakfast uh, was secondary, you know, to, uh, to what we were enjoying while we were eating. And, and that was a lot of fun because essentially you were dead tired after working for 12 hours at night and you have this breakfast and, you know, we would all share drinks and whatever and then, bam, you're out. You're out for the day. And it certainly helped to be able to sleep that way. <laughs> But those were the parties. I mean, I, you know, we were out. In, we were out. Sorry, we were out. In the, we were out in the country. You know, we were. So it wasn't like we could just, you know, jump down into town and, you know, go to the local bar. No, there were no Ubers. No. 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 Let me tell you one thing. That if you're in a film shoot and the whole thing is going on at night, right? Uh, you're going to start when it gets dark, so then there's going to be lunch at midnight. Yeah. And then the breakfast you're having is at the end of the day, I guess, before the sun comes up. Or no, that's dinner. Sorry, that's dinner. That's at the end, right? Yeah. You're living your life in reverse is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and I had all the false teeth in my mouth, so I couldn't yeah, eat anything or drink anything. So now I'm sitting out on the set, and I'm like, what am I doing? What is going on here? And it did roll around on my birthday, so now I'm sitting in a chair yeah. in the woods, and, and you know, you close off an eye for like over 20 hours, whatever it is, it, it's really annoying. You lose your depth perception, and you're drooling, and you're not happy, and you're sitting in a chair in the woods, when all these guys are all eating and drinking, and I'm sitting there, waiting for Amy. We were trying to isolate you. <laughs> yeah. There is no re reining this one in. Uh. <laughs> Any other questions right now? Yes. So watching part two, to me, it seems to be the one that's like the kind of the campiest feeling, you know? Like you're doing all the setup, you got all the counselors and all that. Did y'all engage in any like archery, any camp esque activities for the two weeks where y'all were alone? Oh yeah, you didn't see it on screen, but when I gave that speech to everybody about the activities, we spent hours and hours out there doing stuff. Don't listen to him. <laughs> we did nothing. We're actors. We did Well, I will say that uh, the first time uh, Stu Charno introduced me to Tai Chi. Oh, yeah. And he taught me about Tai Chi. And, you know, I don't have the best posture. And I always think of Stu to this day. He would say, your shoulders go up and down. Yes. Yeah. I remember Do you remember that? Yeah. And I always think of him now, like, when I... I work on my posture, I have stew in my head. I also have this other memory, I've never told Russell this. So we had, there was a lot of time sitting around waiting, 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 waiting. 
And I, for some reason, this has really stuck in my head that Russell had the the, late, the thing on the neck. The foam prosthetic. Yeah, yeah, and so he couldn't eat or drink, so he missed out on the meal that Warrington was referring to. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and I just remember him sitting in the cabin waiting and having to like have a straw in his mouth to eat and just like, it's just, it's not fun to just sit there like that. And I remember feeling really bad for him. Thank and you. I thought, I thought, oh my God, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> like, this is dark and scary. And then I also remember, I remember that moment. And then also I had a flashback yesterday because Warrington in that prosthetic was really miserable. And you could just, even though his whole face was covered, you just kind of look at him and he just kind of sh would shake his head. <laughs> and he was really, really miserable. I will never forget that. And then um, yesterday when I walked in for the photo shoot, he had the whole rubber mask on and he was just sitting over in the corner. And I go, I look at him and he's just going like this. <laughs> and I said, flashback. I remember how miserable that was for you. I remember that. And I remember Russell. I was so it's just kind of thing I wore my eyes team. closed. It, it starts to throw you off a little bit. Yeah. You get your yeah, depth no, perception goes off. Yeah. And then if you're gonna time a stunt with one eye, I I go always always get myself in timing from jumping a horse over a fence because I okay I got three strides. One, two, third one, you take it off. Boom, boom, off. But yeah, one eye is very disturbing. So, so. I have to ask you a question. Yeah, okay. After yeah, this hard. experience. Not too hard. <laughs> after the, the experience, did you think of changing your career? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I bet. I, you know, I did do the LA trip, and then, you know, you're gonna get bored walking around with your eight by 10 resume, your headshot resume, so sooner or later you're gonna find, okay, are there other chapters in my life? What else can I do? So yeah, I come back to New York, then fine. I thought it'd be a great idea for Jason to go to Wall Street. Great idea. <laughs> now, now I'm roaming around Wall Street with a machete, and one of the big stories they had me coming out of the stock exchange with a meat cleaver. <laughs> but uh, I didn't even think about Friday 13th for a minimum of five, six, seven years. Then all of a sudden, they're, they're coming up with big stories because of you and the support of the brand. They're saying, well, oh, where are all the Jasons now? So now they're lining them all up, and I'm like, God, who are all these people? And then this was right after C.J. Graham did his, and then so they lined up all the Jasons. Here I am with a meat cleaver coming out of stock exchange. Anyway, so we're constantly on a journey to keep rediscovering ourselves. But yeah, and then this, this now with the power of the brand and all the toys and the merchandising, it's following me. Now, anytime anyone refers to me doing anything, oh, Slasher, Slasher Warrington did this, Slasher Warrington did that, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> And then, oddly enough, <laughs> I don't know, anyway, so the journey goes on, but... Adrian but, had the best thing. What'd you say? What? I don't remember. I have short-term memory loss. <laughs> you say it. <laughs> Screen time dialogue this big. Stories this big. Yes. <laughs> I, I say that about my first Jason, but it, it kind of applies. This is called sensationalism. I have a funny story. Come on, Russell Todd. Zoli, Zoli, stars all the time. <laughs> um, you know, usually we film out of sequence, but for some reason my death was the last shot that I had to do on this film. So I remember calling my parents and saying, hey, Mom, Dad, I'm doing my last shot. This is where they kill me. And my mom says, Russell, why did they say that to the last shot? <laughs> Is, is this a snuff film? <laughs> Seriously, and then my father chimed in and felt the same thing. And I said, look, it's Paramount. It's a sequel to the first one. I'm sure I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally had to call them after, no matter what time it was, to let them know I was still alive. Yeah, um, I will say the same, same thing. Uh, wait, what they did is they had, I don't know if any of you guys were there, but they had a screening of part one for us before we started the movie. So I guess it was whoever was in New York or available to go and see the screening. And it was before it, the, the actors from part one, before it all exploded for them, because it had just come out. So nobody knew who Kevin Bacon was, and you know, he was a big actor around New York, so some of us knew him, but you know, most people didn't know him. And I hadn't seen him for a while on the circuit, you know, on the um, uh, commercial circuit. So I'm watching this film, and I went home to my mother, and I said, 
I think this might be a snuff film. Um, <laughs> she's like, yeah. She goes, why do you say that? And I said, because I've never seen any of these people again on the streets of New York City. Oh, and, and she was like, well, then don't do it. And I'm like, yeah, it's got to be legit. Same thing. It's Paramount Pictures. My agent set me up with this. And it was funny. the same feeling. I thought, this is a snuff film. I remember walking out of the screening like this. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. In the woods, I'm going to die. Good company. <laughs> okay, we have time for probably one more question. Yes, uh, sorry. Do him too. We'll do two. You. Yeah, let's do you. Yeah, we got about 10 minutes. What is the most fondest memory you, you have on the set that you're going to take with you? And Warrington, did you actually kill Terry's dog in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> we wish. No, Muffin is, uh, Muffin is going I strong. That. I didn't mean that. That was a joke. <laughs> I don't really. Sorry. <laughs> we love Muffin. Dogs yes. Muffin's Muffin's great. <laughs> I have a Muffin dog now in my life. So. Oh, good. I think Muffin made more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Em. Russell, how ironic is it that your death was for Hanging Upside Down when the only other movie I've seen you die in, you also were hanging yes. upside down? Right? <laughs> wow. she, she's referring to the first movie I ever did. It was called He Knows You're Alone. Did anyone say that? It was Tom Hanks' first movie. Yeah. But unfortunately, another, nothing ever happened for Tom. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it opens where you see, uh, I'm in, the in a car with a girl, we're making out, and then I go, we hear something, I'm uh, banging, I go out there, and, uh, and I go out, and then she wonders, where are you, where are you? She comes out, I'm hanging upside down with my throat slit, and I'm dead above the car. I thought, and then they cast me in this, and I'm going to die the same way. <laughs> no, it's bizarre. And so if anyone's doing a slasher movie where they need someone hanging upside down, <laughs> let me know. How did you die in Chopping Mall? Oh, in Chopping Mall, I was electrocuted by the robots. Who's not Chopping Mall? Yeah. 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 That's great. Wow. I'm not going to go into Chopping Mall, because we're, we're here for Friday the 13th. But thank you for watching that one, too. That's such a wow. great name for a film, Chopping Mall. That, that was a great name. That was a great Where shopping costs you an arm and a leg. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's your question? Yeah, um, when, when they find them, okay, when, first, when, a, when Bill and Monica are wandering in the woods and they find the mangled dog, is it possible that it could have been another dog exactly like Muffet, but it, but it wasn't? If, if, if it was one exactly, like another dog like Muffin, because at the end Muffin appears, is that, right. would that have been possible? Yeah, how did they explain that? It that, was a it, possum. Yeah. Raccoon possum in the woods. A possum looks like a woman. Yeah, 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 that's what it's like. You know, there, there's a lot of suspension of disbelief in, in the films. So, uh, you know, and basically, the it's like they wrote, they, they, you know, straight, there were a lot of things that were not answered in Friday the 13th. You know, certainly all the people, Stu, you know, Ted, you know, he stays at the bar. A lot of people stay at the bar. A lot of people don't come back to camp. Yeah. And you wonder, what the hell happened to them? <laughs> well, you know, we, we couldn't write all that, and we didn't have the budget anyway, so uh, I guess we'll just forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, in terms of Muffin, I, I, you know, it, I, I don't know. Is it ever really explained? Yeah, I don't think there's any, a real answer to your question. No, unfortunately. Yeah, because to me, it's possible. It could have been another dog exactly like Muffin that he slapped. And, and then, then Muffin Maybe he had a dog, dog fetish? It's a stray dog going through the woods. Action at Crystal Lake. He's hanging. <laughs> Anybody else? It's a good place to go. Yes. Did any of you guys hang out with a crazy relative? Uh, no. No, I didn't. He was gone before I got there, I believe. How could you hang out with a guy whose line was, they're all doomed? <laughs> it's not a death curse. A death curse. Yeah, it's, and you. it's funny because I, uh, on one of the podcasts or something recently, and, you know, thank goodness everybody's still interested. You know, I said that that with you know Walt Gorney, basically he was a very professional, and I only saw him when he was in character and on the set. And then two days later on Facebook, a picture shows up with Marta and I and Walt in the big cabin, you know, laughing it up and having a drink. You know, and it's like. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I may have been on my Instagram. Oh. 
Okay. On your yeah. Instagram back then. So it no, just no, no, proved like, oh, what wow. a liar I yeah. was. <laughs> but, you know, I've heard um, Steve Miner tell a story about how he really wishes that he had brought him back. Right, John? Like that Walt Gorney, he really liked, they, they wish that they had oh, continued with him. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he just died? Yeah, while we were making out. You don't remember? Oh, because you oh, were concentrating oh, oh. on something. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot, he, he actually, I forgot he died when uh, Amy was trying to sexually harass me. Sword <laughs> throat? <laughs> you have a sword throat? Barb wire sword. Long before the Me Too movement. <laughs> is number two your favorite? It doesn't have to be, but I know a lot of people are saying that. Yeah. It's so hard to choose, though, because they're all so good. It is. How can you pick your favorite? Right. It's like children. <laughs> Do you have a favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Anybody else? You're the host. We got about five minutes, guys. Five minutes. I got one question here. Bill. Bill got a question for you. Bill. Tell them what's up. Say yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there any advice you guys have for any of you, but especially for Warrington? Because Jason obviously doesn't have lines. So if right. he had a line, like a Freddy line, like this iconic line, signature line, what do you think? I know uh, it could be uh, die, bitch, die. <laughs> it could be run, bitch, run. <laughs> it could be I kill for mommy. <laughs> Your ass in my cabin. <laughs> now. Well, that, that's a really interesting thing because we have a podcast called The Dolls of Horror, and one of our segments is Epic Line. So I want to wrap this up by asking all of you guys. Do you have a favorite line that you've ever said, either in this movie, TV show, stage, whatever? Epic line for you. Well, I, I, you know, was it really, well, you know, asshole, this is my <laughs> <laughs> Good one, that's it. It's kind of my Friday the 13th part two identities. <laughs> what am I gonna say? You know. Jason, mommy. <laughs> There is someone in this fucking room. <laughs> well, it used to be, then he's still there. But now it's payback, some bitch. Yeah. I think probably, goddamn that Paul and his wilderness bullshit. <laughs> That's a great one. You, you had my lines. I like die, bitch, die. Lauren? Uh, who, me? Yeah. yeah. Next. Oh, I, I, epic I, line. I epic line. line. Doesn't have to be yours. It could be anyone's. I, I don't have a favorite line. I have my favorite moment. Okay. What do you think? Of? Putting on the brown undies. <laughs> That was my favorite moment. Too. <laughs> I love those brownies. Uh, yeah, just the campfire scene was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to do. You know, just talking about the Jason legend, and you know, that was probably my favorite. But the second act needs work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do I say? I say it before you said that line. I say what? I say uh, how? How is that pretty good or something like that? Yeah. 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 Well, guys. thank you guys. You thank guys you. Thank, so you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys, for the fight. Thank you, guys, for the dance. Can we get a standing ovation for these guys? Come on. Let's go.